Welcome to the Money and Meaning Show. I'm your host, Kenea Corder, National Certified Counselor and the world's number one clinical financial hypnotherapist. Each week, I'll share with you the research I'm uncovering as I chronicle the search for meaning over money. My interviews, tips, and resources will help you determine what you need to get the most out of your practice and your life. Because life is about more than money. It's about meaning. So let's get into today's show. Hey there, my prosperos. Welcome back to this episode of the Money and Meaning Podcast. Okay, so guess what? You're not going to like what I'm about to say, but I got to tell you. There are two more episodes, this one and the next one, before we go on a hiatus. Yeah, it won't be long, just a couple weeks. We, one, we just need to take a break sometimes. You know how your favorite TV shows, they're like 13 episodes or 22 episodes. I know sometimes it's only six episodes. And then there's a hiatus and then they come back with more. Well, that's what we're going to do. So that our, so we're going to, we're going to stop around episode 149 maybe 150 because I have this three topics that are burning inside of me. I think I'll only be able to get two of them out before our hiatus, but I might get the third one out, but it really just depends on uh, how this goes. My, my goal is to absolutely get two more episodes out, 148, 149, this one and the next one, and then come back and be on fire for the next 50 episodes because then we'll be at 200 and I don't know why that's a big deal but it really is a big deal to me I think it's a big deal because it's five years so I don't know if many of you know this I'm hesitating because I'm like do they know this do you know that my degree is actually in television production so doing this podcast is like a dream come true for me because that is why I went to to college is to was to be a television and film product producer becoming a television and film producer was something I always wanted since I was really young. I was like, okay, maybe I'll produce commercials. Maybe it'll be television shows, maybe it'll be films. I probably was even okay with plays, but podcasts weren't even around. And this is not what this episode is about, but I'm getting to what this episode is about. And so doing this podcast, I really do run it like it's a television show. And when I see the quality suffering, I'm like, oh, That's because we're not running it like a television show. So let's go on hiatus. Let's get a couple of episodes in the can like television does. And I know some of you don't even watch TV. You only watch Netflix or something like that or Hulu. Well, there was a time when the show only came on when it came on. (laughs) You know, you remember those times? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Well, It wasn't on demand. And although podcast is like a hybrid of that, like you have all these episodes on demand if you want to go back and listen. Now, it's a totally different podcast. If you listen all four years, you're going to be like, wow, this podcast has changed so much, which I'm not really usually a fan of. I usually am like how you start is the way you need to be. Like people come and tune in for a certain reason. But when we first started this, it was called Prosperity Report. And I was talking more to couples because that was my target market. But our target market has evolved over the years. Now, originally, when I started my practice, I was talking to high achieving teenagers or teenagers of high achieving parents. It's really what it was. And the teenagers weren't always high achieving, which was part of the reason why the parents wanted them to meet with me because they thought they should be. And then, but I didn't have a podcast then. So that never got translated into my social media and into my my marketing. And, but then I started talking to couples and then from couples, it's like the woman dropped off and I just started talking to the men, which was fine for me. I was having a ball and I still am having a ball. And so what this episode really is about is Some people ask me, like, why do I choose to work with men? I don't know if that's the exact way the question gets asked, but especially when I'm in sort of like a woman's group kind of thing, women tend to say, oh, well, what about women? It's like, well, they're like 99,000 self-development things out there for women, maybe more. There's such a big, this pool of 
courses and groups and retreats and coaching and therapy. And there's so much out there for women. So what are we going to do with our men? Because something that I have noticed is that women really are doing their work right now. Now, in doing their work, it's creating some divisiveness and some self-righteousness, but that's part of the process. Just know that the divisiveness and the self-righteousness is part of the process. But the longer you do the work, the more grace you give the people around you and the more patience you gain. So we were talking about this in Prosperity Club. I've been talking about this with different friends of mine. We talk about it in our relationship. But what I am noticing is that there's just so much out there for women that women are doing their work there. They have their friends to talk to, right? They have their mother to talk to. Maybe they can talk to their pastor or somebody at church. They might be in different groups that allow them to have these conversations. And a lot of times, just more willing, they would talk to a stranger on the bus or on the airplane, but on the airplane, you get it. And so women have a lot more outlets and men just don't have as many. So this episode is really about one, why I choose to work with men. And two, it is a, it's a call. It's a plea to men to do your work. I do private retreats for two reasons. One, because men prefer it that way. They would prefer to do their work alone with me. But two, the second reason why I do it is because it's for me. Like I get to really pour into one man at a time, really getting him to see you don't have to be what society told you you had to be. Men are programmed just as women are programmed. So while women are doing all of their work to reprogram themselves, men have to be doing that work too. Otherwise we create divisiveness. And because women have so many outlets and have for years, men have to catch up. And so if we're going to do a crash course, which is what the private retreat is, the presidential experience retreat is, it is a crash course. And so if we're going to do a crash course, I got to get you caught up on all the stuff your woman is already caught up on. Now, lately, I've been getting a lot of calls from parents asking me to work with their teenagers. And I'm not that open to going back to teenagers because I feel like it would be a big shift from our current trajectory. However, I am obedient. I listen to the universe. And one of the things that happened was I've been working with a teenager for years. Like I am just part of the family. You know how they say it takes a village to raise a child, that kind of thing. Well, the parents trust me, like with pretty much every decision that is happening with the child, I am somewhat part of it. Now they are making the decisions. They don't depend on me, but they definitely trust me and ask for some input as the, you know, kind of family therapist. And I don't meet with the adults. When I meet with a, a teenager, I make it very clear that I am their, their connection, their therapist and not the parents. However, we are a team. So we're all going to rely on each other. And they are one of the parents that I've worked with that, that I just adore, like just the growth of this family has been so phenomenal. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because what happens, the, the men that I'm working with, this stuff is not new. The stuff that they're dealing with or, or releasing or clearing when they work with me came to them when they were young. And then what happened was right around teenage years, it bursts out. And the teenagers right now are pushing back and they're letting us know, no, I won't do what you say and I won't be who you want me to be. But the thing is, because they're resisting and because there's so much divisiveness, they're going too far in the other direction because we won't bond with them and say, okay, what do you need not to be programmed? So going back to my men, men hear me and, you know, check me if you was like, hey, I want to add something to what you want to say, can I? Or if you say, I want to disagree with what, all of that is welcome. So, you know, you can always just send us a 
email at podcast at presidentiallifestyle.com if you want to add to this conversation. Now, of course, it's not, we're not going to address it until after the hiatus, but you, your feedback is welcome. So men, I'm saying to you, something happened when you were younger and it told you how to handle the world. It told you what life was about. So you might have gotten some programming like, if it is to be, it's up to me, right? That's a saying that that's out there in the world. And and it's so not true. It is in the sense that you just need to get in touch with the feeling. How do I want to feel? This is how I want to feel. That all That's the only part that's up to you. And then you attract into your life the rest of it. And so, but we get into, men get into this idea that they have to, be the ones to do the work. They have to get up and do the work and work hard and put the pieces together. And if the pieces fall apart, then they're the only ones who are going to deal with it. And and I'm not saying all men. Remember, I'm going to generalize a couple of stereotypes in the world, but this is what I am seeing that's coming between men and women. And it has to stop. So this episode and next episode is all about what I feel like needs to stop in the world. And yeah, I'm going to drop two heavy freaking bombs on you. And then I'm going to go on hiatus and then I'm going to come back with some solutions. That's my goal. Because when we come back, we're going to be talking about the search for meaning over money deeper. And we're going to talk about it in every area, wealth, health, adventure, love, and legacy, and how to get there. But what I want you to understand, we'll be talking to people about their stories and quite a few men we'll be talking to, but also some women, their stories of how they went through that search for meaning over money. But what I am finding is that there are some things that just have to stop right now. One of them is the self-development industry that I am a part of that I feel separate from. And so that's what next episode is going to be about. But This episode today is really about what we need to stop doing between men and women. And I'm going to give this breakdown to you from male perspective. But men, I am not a man. I am a woman and I do work with men. So I'm giving you permission. I'm asking you to reach out to me if you if you agree, if you disagree, if you say, yes, thank you, Kene. If you say, no, but what about this? And and I'm, I'm just saying I'm open to this being a discussion, not me preaching or teaching. Okay. All right. So the first thing that I think needs to be addressed is that we are separating ourselves. So there is men's work and there's women's work, right? I think that part should be separate. I think that men should do their work on their own or together with other men. I do not think that that should happen with women because it is my belief that we all have to get to our higher self in order to really converse or connect with the other party. So what that means is we first start by doing our own work. So women... You get in your groups or you get in your retreats or, you know, however you want to do it, your courses, whatever medium you choose, you first get and do your own work. What is it that you need to clear? Then you get in a group or you get in your retreat or your one-on-one or whatever you choose, your courses, and you do your work. So even though I'm saying we need to stop dividing, I'm saying the way that we stop dividing, because when we come together and we haven't done our own work, well, all we're doing is pointing fingers. You're bad. No, you're bad. No, you're bad. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. And when we do that, nothing gets resolved. You might have heard me speak against the Me Too movement because I feel like women are bonding together against men because they feel like men have hurt them and they want to be separate from the person that hurt them rather than saying, I see you have trauma too and you let your trauma affect me. You hurt people, hurt people kind of thing. And for that reason, I can't be around you. And that's a step that is, but we have to stop it now. We can't create more and more division. If you're going to walk away from each other, 
You need to be walking into your own corners to do your work. Get patched up, get cleaned up, get some protection on, heal your own trauma because part of the reason why their trauma was even able to trigger you was because you have still trauma that you have to work with. So when you do go into your own corners, it's not because you're pointing fingers to say you're bad, you're bad, and I'm getting away from you, is to say, I am triggered, I am hurt, I've got to go heal. Because what I know for sure is that when you go into your own corner and heal, when you come back, you're able to pour more into that other person and they can heal themselves. So I was saying earlier that men have this idea of they've got to do it on their own. It's like when you're five years old and you're like, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. You know, five-year-olds and they're always trying to do it by themselves. It's like men get that and then they never lose it. It's always, I can do it by myself. Now, again, I said I was generalizing. So that's one type of man that I can do it by myself. And then there's a second type of man or another type of man that's like, I'm not going to do anything myself. Everybody else is going to serve me, serve me, serve me, serve me, serve me, serve me. And that guy probably had a trauma that happened in their past that was passed down from their parents. And that's creating this I'm the center of attention idea because in many families, and this happened in in my family a lot, you do serve the man. The man is the king of the house, right? And so you, the leader of the house. And so every attention goes on making sure that he's okay. And when that happens, sometimes he loses, he loses the idea that he has to come with some work. He has to do some work in order to continue to lead. So if you're going to lead, you've got to be that strong king. And that brings me to this third man who is like, well, wait, am I a king? I don't think I am. It's kind of like the imposter syndrome we've been talking about. It's like, I don't think I'm a king. So do I deserve to lead or should I be served? like really questioning who he is. Now, sometimes you can be all three. Sometimes you can toggle through these. You can be that I can do it on my own kind of man. And then next thing you know, you're like, serve me. And you get a little selfish. And then you're like, wait, why are people serving me? I don't think I deserve this. You can toggle through all of these. But these are the three things that I see the most in my practice, the things that I'm working on the most. This is why women send their husbands to me because they're like, hey, this man can be more than what he is. He has so much potential, yet he isn't living up to it. And I'm tired of it. It's like, eventually she just gets irritated. She's like, I'm just tired of him not living up to who he can be. And he's living in his imposter syndrome and looking at the external stuff and getting more down and more down and more down on himself, even though he's done some great things in his life. And she sees it and the world sees it, but he does not see it. And it is sad and it frustrates her. And then she creates this divisiveness and now she wants to be separate from him. And she's like, you got to get away from me and and I'm tired. So today is about is identifying. You know how in our it formula, I say you have to identify and then you set an attention and then you tame your brain for change. Well, let's really work a lot on the identify. Now, once we do that, we're not staying there. I want you to understand that we only identify so that we know where we start, where we're starting so we can get the heck out of there. We're not digging a ditch. We're not going in. We're not going down rabbit holes. We're not, it doesn't even matter why this is like, we don't need to know the, the thing that triggered it this when you were six years old. None of that. You can learn that if you want to. I find my women want to know that more than my men. Sometimes my men do, but most of the time they don't. They're just like, how do we change it? How do we fix it? How do we, you know, how do I get to the next level? That's really all they want. And so 
that's what I'm, I want you to understand, especially with the work that we do. We're not staying in the past very long. We're not staying in the quote unquote problem challenge, you know, the trigger very long. We just are identifying it and then we're moving on from there. So I'm identifying these three triggers, these three starting points that I see. And that is the, I can do it on my own, that independent man who does not want any help, who doesn't know how to play team. And then there's that king, we're going to call him, that wants to be served at all costs, even though he may not be leading very well, but he still wants to be served. And then there is that imposter syndrome guy who's like, I can't do it on my own. I do need some help and I got some help, but I don't know if I deserve this help. And he's really questioning. So if you feel like, no, that's not me, I'm this, then tell me what this is so we can continue to work this. I'm just telling you what I, what comes in my office or my practice quite often and what we tend to work with. And when we get that, what I notice is that one, I already told you, if a woman is sending her husband to me and she sees the imposter syndrome in him where she's like, I know you're great and I hate that you don't see it and you're not living up to your potential. Well, we also get that woman who is like, get this selfish man away from me. And he almost comes off as abusive, usually emotionally or mentally abusive because he sees himself as the king and everybody should serve him. And so he comes off selfish And she's like, I've I've served him long enough and I will no longer serve him. He must be delusional if he thinks he's a king because he is not. And so she starts to abuse him because he was abusing her. So she starts to beat him down and abuse him. And that's not going to help. But so she might send her husband to me or her husband might end up calling me saying, look, I love my wife. I don't want her to leave me. I don't mean to abuse her. I didn't think I was abusing her. But see, I guess I was, that's what she keeps saying. And I don't want to do it anymore. So what can I do? And so that guy comes to me and the work there is for one, him to see how his actions affect others because he is so in the present that he just doesn't see it. His, the wake behind him, right? The, The wreckage behind him, you know, those people who like, They just swerve on the road and then they end up causing accidents behind them. So that's how this man can be very much. He is the guy who just doesn't see it. He didn't know what was happening behind him. He doesn't look in his rearview mirror. He only looks at what's right in front of his windshield. He's always in the present. And men do a much better job of being in the present than women do. It's fascinating what they can do (laughs) being in the present. And it's work for women. It is so much work for us to be in the present. We are either in the past or we are in the future. We are in the future, making sure everything is taken care of and nobody is hurt, right? Everybody is nourished and 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 cared for. Or we are in the past, like, oh, shoot, how did I mess that up? Blah, 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 judging ourselves. How do I be a better woman, mom, wife, all the things, right? Business owner. And so we live a lot in the past and in the future where men live so much in the present a lot of times that they end up hurting women because it is about their, this need right here, this need, this impulse, that's all that they can think about. Not consequences, not, you know, they're not collecting the data to see how that's going to affect them in the future. It is just right now. And just right now is, is a wonderful way to live, but it can also be conversed in the way that we live in this world with other people. So if you have practice living in the present, you'll also have to do some work around knowing how your present is connected to all other presents. Mm-hmm. Again, we're identifying. So let's not go too deep yet, can I? Okay, let me stay on the surface. Let me just lift myself up, back up to the surface. Okay, Ah, I'm up here. Take a breath and let's keep it on the identify. I'm going to intention next, but identify first. (sighs) Okay. So we talked about the imposter man. We talked about the king, you know, serve me. Man, and now let's talk about the I can do this on my own guy. This guy is so strong, yet 
he feels so incapable because even though he keeps fixing things, because he keeps telling himself, I can do it on my own, he keeps finding things to fix. So he's like, oh, this is broken. I got to fix it. This is broken. I got to fix it. I'm the only one who can fix it. Uh, Even if he doesn't have all the right tools, right? He can have a hammer and a and a wrench, but what might really be needed is a screwdriver. He will still try and fix it. So what that means is this guy, I can do it on my own guy, can be ineffective. But it's all he knows is that that hammer and that wrench. That's all he knows. That's all he's gotten. That's what he got growing up. And so he just keeps using the hammer and the wrench to fix everything, which and then tries to figure out why things aren't getting fixed. Right. And then sometimes he even breaks things, like destroys things just so he can put them back together and prove to himself that he can do it. I can do this on my own. He's probably said that many, many times. He probably moved out of his house really early and was on his own. He might have even built a business really early in his life, but he's been on his own in the back of his mind. He is looking for somebody to rescue him. So every once in a while, he'll go into like damsel mode. And I know that's not a nice thing to say about a man because men are like, what? I'm no freaking damsel. But that's just to give you a visual of what happens. He'll shift into damsel and he's like, somebody else needs to take care of this. I'm tired of taking care of everything. All I do is, and then he kind of goes into this complain and pity role. Yeah. So do you see yourself in any of those three? And if you do, then you need to call me. (laughs) I'm sorry. That's serious. Laughing, but serious. Really. If you do see yourself, then there's still work to be done. Why are you denying that there's work to be done? Why are you pointing fingers at your woman or at your children or at your coworkers or your employees what about you? Now, keep in mind, I am all about the men. So women, I am not saying let's down these men. I'm saying let's identify, let's observe, let's make some observations and make those observations clear to them. Have you noticed this? Now you might say, I've been telling him this for 20 years. I've been telling him this for 10 years. I've been telling him this for a year, whatever your complaint is. True that, but he's not seeing it. So how can we get him to see it. This is why I do this work because there's plenty of things out there to show women the work that they need to do. Now, I think there's another course or something that's not being developed that I'm not going to develop. But if there's somebody listening and you're thinking, oh, what course should I develop? Please create a course on showing women how to connect with men. Maybe it's something I'll do in the future, but right now I'm just doing the work with men, getting men on track, on their path to prosperity, getting them their breakthrough to clarity. That is what our company is doing. We do that through financial hypnotherapy and then we kind of go into the nuts and bolts. And, you know, you hear on this podcast, me talk a lot about the financial hypnotherapy and the retreats and that stuff that we do. But some of the stress that is caused in business is you not being organized. Now, nothing worse than an unorganized rich person, wealthy person. Oh my gosh. When I tell you, it is nothing worse than that because they have so many things coming at them and so many decisions. This is why the saying, more money, more problems. This is why this is a saying, but it's not more money, more problems. It's just that you didn't work on the problem, the little problems you had. So then you pile these bigger problems on top of it. Now, yeah, you do have more problems, but it wasn't the money that brought those more problems. It was the ignorance or the ignorance. Ooh, (laughs) that was good. You have been ignoring all these problems and they're piling up 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 and they're piling up. And then now you get money and then you say, oh, more money, more problems. No, more ignorance, ignorance, more problems. You with me? Yeah. I did not wake up this morning meaning to preach like this, but that's what happened. So I'm so glad you're here with me. Wow. Yeah. All right. Let's sit with that for just a second. Let's just be with that because that's real. It's not more money, more problems. So stop saying that. Where is the problem? 
And really, this is just an opportunity. Yes, it is an opportunity to hear you to connect with your children. It's an opportunity for you to connect with your wife. It's an opportunity for you to connect with your employees. It's, a, it's an opportunity to connect with your other friends. Man, you are not alone. You are not alone. So stop saying, I can do it by myself. And even if you're that king, you're not sitting on some pedestal, some throne, asking for everybody to just serve you. Come down off that throne. Work with the people. Kind of like while I'm saying that, I'm thinking of, you know, stories of Jesus where, you know, once since they, they talked about him like he was a king, but he was always in it with the people. Think about the, the highest, most revered and respected leaders. Those are the, the best leaders are in it with the people, not sitting on some throne getting fed. And sure, the leader absolutely needs to get fed first because you need the leader to stay strong and healthy and be able to protect and, and take care of the tribe. But the leader has to come with, the, the leader needs to have someone wise on their side giving them wise counsel and they need to be taking good care of that wise one. And sometimes that is the wife. But if you beat her down, she will not have anything left to give you so you can serve. We are a team. This happens together. Stop dividing. Yeah. Only reason that women and men should divide is to do our work so that we can come together stronger, wiser, better. So this is coming right after Father's Day. And if you didn't, if you didn't hug your father, if you didn't love on your father, if you didn't just tell your father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe he didn't get it all right. Maybe he held in some stuff. Maybe he poured out too much stuff. Whatever he did, I guarantee you he did it out of love. I guarantee you I put my own life on it. And that is so strong to say. But that is how much I know because I have worked with enough men to know everything they do is for the people they love. They're just going about it the wrong way because they're not doing their inner work. So men, if you love your family, if you love yourself, if you love this world you serve, do your work. Now is the time. I am here for you. My team is here for you. All you have to do is take one little step towards us and we will take it from there. And that's all I want to say about that. I will see you sooner. I know we're going to, next week is our plea to the self-development industry to take care of these people, take care of our people. And then after that, we're going on hiatus. Stay with me. I want to see you here, back here in a few weeks. Make sure you subscribe because if you don't subscribe, then you won't know when we come back. We are we're coming back big and strong and it is going to be so good. I don't, the first episode, I'll tell you what the next 50, 49 episodes will be about. I don't want to give you that now because I'm going to go into meditation, into, I'm going to fast and meditate and also just work on this podcast to get it to a higher quality. I have a vision for this Money and Meaning podcast. I have a vision for presidential lifestyle, prosperity club, presidential experience. Like I have a vision. Now, my vision is nothing close to what it's going to turn out to be. I already know that because that's how my life works. I think of something and then I get Sarah Deputy like, oh my gosh, this is even better than I thought it was going to be. So I'm just so looking forward to what develops, but I at least have a vision to start with. So thank you for being part of my vision, part of my journey and one more episode and then I'm going to take a break and then I'll see you when we get back. All right. Be here. I need you to be here. You know, I've worked with my abandonment issues. 
However, I still don't want you to go away. Do not abandon me. Be with me. And I want to be with you. I have so much more to give you. So I will see you sooner, my Prosperity Pro. In the meantime, have a prosperous July. Love you. Mean it completely, totally, fully, freely. I love you freely. Mm, Do that for me. Go out in the world and love freely. Have you noticed I've said goodbye like seven times? This is weird for me because I usually like goodbye and I'm out, right? But okay, I'm going to let you go now. (laughs) Thank you for staying all the way to the end. You are so good to me. Thanks for listening all the way to the end, my Prosperity Pro. I want to stay connected with you. Here are four ways. Pick the one that works best for you if you want to stay connected with me. One, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Send them to podcast at presidentiallifestyle.com. I'd love it if you would make a one or two minute audio message and attach it to an email. That'd be the easiest way for me to get it. Ask me anything about creating a life of meaning over money, and I'll get you an answer. Remember, the email address is podcast at presidentiallifestyle.com. Two, subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends because you guys might want to have a discussion about it, especially if they're a CEO who wants to shift from the old American dream to a life of meaning. Three, we try not to have any sponsors on this show unless they are truly in line with our values. I mean, really a good fit. So that means we fund this podcast ourselves. I'd like you to take a look at our resource page to see if there's any products or services that we recommend that are right for you. If not, no worries, maybe later. If so, please use our affiliate link to purchase. Thank you in advance for doing that. You are such an amazing person. Okay, four and last. If you want to know what's happening over here at Presidential Lifestyle and you want us to email you the update, then go to presidentiallifestyle.com slash blog slash now. And you'll see the current updated blog for the week. But you'll also see a link to subscribe to that blog. We can email it to you if you like. That's presidentiallifestyle.com slash blog slash now. Don't worry. You don't have to remember that link or any links. They're all in the show notes. Oh, and I forgot to say, if you're enjoying this podcast, go ahead and leave us a review and tell us how much you're enjoying it. And now for the legalese. This podcast is not to replace professional counsel. The best advice is from a professional who knows you and your specific situation. The topics discussed in this podcast are general in nature and for informational or entertainment purposes only. We encourage you to meet with a professional that you can discuss your specific situation with. Whether you choose us or someone else, one-on-one counsel is important whether it's a financial, therapeutic, legal, or other decision. So that's all for now. I'll see you next episode. And remember, you can have wealth in all of its forms. Believe it, and you'll soon see it.